Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Uh, it's coming coming towards the end of the month that I did want to do a little bit of an update. We have been seeing, you know, I, I do follow quite a bit of different YouTubers who talk about the market. Sometimes it's just to for video ideas uh, to see who are other people who are successful in creating YouTube videos to get an idea. Some people I do follow kind of for their portfolio analysis of what to get into or what to stay away from. So for this video, this is just a quick update. You can see where my portfolio value is at. We are back up. You can see my earned dividends so far in this account. I am, like I said, I am holding more uh, money in cash as I'm waiting to see if the market or if we're going to have a little bit of pullback. And of course, I still am slowly uh, buying. I've been adding adding a couple of a little bit here and there. Not really too much. As I said that I was waiting for a little bit of a pullback. So still adding a little bit more money, still putting a little bit of buys, but I'm really not buying the way um, I, I you probably would f with the amount of money that I keep putting into the account. And it's just because I'm waiting to see if the market's going to pull back. We are at a point in the market where we're right we were coming right back to that 27k and of course i knew the market was going to pull back and so we're probably going to come back to around 26 maybe it's 26.2 and see a little bit of a bump back up as you can see right here this is kind of where the market stalled in its peak and it's right where we're stalling right now on the downtrend i want to see if the market does come back down to that 25k level and then of course i'll dump a little bit more money into uh, the portfolio as i'm tr play i'm basically playing the channel so like I said in my last video, as you can see, the market is ba was basically stuck in this channel from about April um, almost into June. We were kind of stuck between about uh, 23K to 25K, and then we finally broke out, went from 25K to 27K, came all the way back down to 25K. So I'm trying to buy the dip in the channel where we're trading i know there's a lot of youtubers who are talking you uh doom and gloom and etc and you're seeing it in the mainstream media i try not to pay attention to a lot of that pay attention to the, to the liquidity right you can see the liquidity in the terms of the amount of, vo uh, of volume coming into the market and we're seeing big vo big sell big sell off volume but really not big sell-offs in the market. And so I'm thinking the market may trade higher. Uh, the reason being, you know, there's all this talk about PPP or, or um, you know, we need to keep up with the 600 uh, for people who are out of work and the moratoriums on, uh, on renters. And often when I see the mainstream media talk about this, it's typically from the standpoint of, single mothers now this a potential crisis in housing tens of millions of americans struggling to pay their rent could now face eviction uh, i'm gonna be 60 next month where do we go single mom lisa pradia and her daughter ayani are being evicted from their texas home what happens to these families that's got babies a federal ban that temporarily stopped landlords from evicting people expired overnight a lot of the information a lot of the pleading or give me money is typically from either women or single moms. And it's typically because most women don't work uh, essential jobs. They're not essential for maintaining the country. They're just jobs, you know, whether it's secretarial jobs or they're working in a supermarket, things of that nature um, that aren't necessarily on the essential side, like construction, uh, working in, in electrical, automotive, um, working in you know, th basically high end business, uh, trading, things of that nature, things that are really going to push the economy, uh, basically going into the up direction is typically run by men. So you're really not seeing when people say, well, you know, all these numbers are coming out and there's millions and millions of people who are out of work. It's typically those individuals who are out of work are typically women that work very low wage jobs and that have, uh, and that are not necessarily working in an area where, it's an essential it's an essential field typically you see a lot of nurses and healthcare workers do work in that area but most of the pas and the doctors are typically men most of the time and that's an, and that's one of the reasons why that area is so expensive in my opinion as a nurse one of the reasons that healthcare is so expensive is primarily because it's pri it's primarily manned in essence by by women and so a lot of these women have a harder time managing patients, especially in America with obesity. So it takes more women to work these positions than typically it would if there was just, you know, primarily a male driven, uh, if it was primarily a male driven 
uh, area of work within the country, you'd see more men be able to maintain a lot of these heavier patients uh, because of obesity, because they're sicker, they're a little bit more difficult to work with. So it typically takes more women to work in these areas. We see that the exact same thing where we see more women working in police. We see that it takes more female police to kind of get the job done than it necessarily would if they were just primarily men. It has nothing to do with being sexist. It's just that as men were more designed to work in a lot of these um, harder, more either brain power necessary jobs or where it takes a much more physical physique to kind of get the job done like in fires like in firemen for example fire police primarily done by by men and of course we see the outcome even within the military with the introduction of women so when i look at the economy from that perspective i see why the market is in essence not going down yes the, the yes the government is uh, basically trickling money into the economy but it's primarily because 50 percent of the people who work typically work on non-essential jobs and we see that as a result of most individuals right most people in the country can't even afford 400 dollar expense that's primarily it's primarily women who are working very very low paying jobs with high debt most of the debt in the country in terms of in terms of uh educational debt right the 1.5 trillion uh, trillion dollars of debt is primarily held by women women who typically don't get uh, a lot of the essential degrees like in stem but even though they push for women to go into that direction so it's one of the reasons why i particularly don't pay much attention to a lot of this doom and gloom is because i know what they're advocating for which is primarily that women aren't basically coming out on top during the pandemic and most of the people who are going back to work are either a medical field or essential men like for for example police officers firemen uh, construction transit sanita uh, sanitation these are typically positions that are held by men and of course if these men are single and don't have a family then it's typically the women in society that are struggling because of the i don't need no man uh, sort of movement but that was that was really just a little bit of a touch um, because I know I see a lot of YouTubers talking doom and gloom and numbers, etc. But you have to understand from the standpoint, it's not just about what kind of job, how many jobs we're losing or how many jobs we're gaining. But it's about what type of jobs that are being retained, what type of jobs are being lost and the actual income from these. Most of these jobs that are being lost typically don't add much and don't add much to the country. Most of those people are not. Uh, net taxpayers they're usually more of a drain on society and so what we might see is we might see a move more towards traditionalism if the market and the mainstream market i should say uh, doesn't recover by comparison to the stock market in any event uh, this update i did want to talk a little bit about um, i did put all of my uh, basically any stock that pays a dividend uh, into my account i basically added in here into uh, your dividend tracker it was an easy way for me to put all of my stocks in to kind of see my annual income what my my dividend yield for basically my entire dividend portfolio was and then of course taking a look at how much i would need as i said before in my in a previous video that my goal was to my goal was to retire in Colombia, and so taking a look at the basically the media income by country, 2020 uh, by population in 2020, and so the medium income that I basically would need to somewhat retire would be about 65.44 for the year. America is basically ranked sixth in terms of income, and you can see Colombia is obviously very much lower by comparison. Uh, mostly because it's cultural i am hispanic so i do speak a i do speak the language i do enjoy uh, the culture it has both uh, a temperate a moderate and then of course there's a very warm part of the country so it kind of allows you to travel different parts of the country obviously do look very different but also because it also it allows me to uh, see where what i have to shoot for in terms of a goal uh, my goal of course is to retire with about 1500 from my dividend portfolio that's basically what i'm looking to get out of this portfolio over i'd say the next five or so years i'm looking to add about 50,000. my goal is to have about 250 invested into a dividend portfolio and then hopefully shoot for about 1500 or so a month in terms of passive income from just the dividend portfolio 
course, I do work as a nurse and there is a retirement package. And of course, I also have uh, another portfolio that I'm working on for my Roth IRA. I do have another Roth IRA uh, with TD that I'm thinking of just kind of switching over into the M1. Uh, so I can basically make it much easier to track uh, with just the one platform. As I do like M1, I've been using M1 from about November of 2019. And I'm seeing uh, kind of enjoy. I like the platform it makes it really easy to use in terms of like I said, in terms of the market, we're not really seeing a lot of market movement. Uh, we're seeing little gains, a little losses, but nothing to worry about. Uh, I'm just going to keep this video short. Just a quick update on kind of my thoughts and where I am thinking the market is going to be moving. I think we'll see a lot more movement uh, from the market, depending upon, of course, who gets elected. I primarily think it's going to be Trump. Um, but in terms of all the violence that's going on, it's all it's all political which is why i really don't pay too much attention to it what i would see uh, a bigger issue if it's actually if biden got elected we probably see a lot harder hits in the market as a result and the economy for that matter but we'll have to wait and see in any event if you have any questions feel free to leave it in the comment section and of course you can check me out check out some of my other videos i'll leave a link to my previous video in the bottom or you can check it out towards the end of this video thanks for watching take care god bless